what is going on guys Noah Brewer here back again with another video and today I'm gonna be showing you some different ways that you can analyze TikTok ads and I'm also gonna be showing you some interesting breakdowns that TikTok has introduced to the game things that Facebook doesn't have and I honestly probably never will have but hopefully they do introduce it at some point but I'm also gonna be going through some basic things like how do you know if a product is a winner how do you you know progress it into a scale once you do know that it's a winner so we'll be covering everything in terms of like analyzing TikTok ads at least on a basic level and then we'll get into some more intricate stuff towards the end of the video. So I have a few observations that I want you to keep in mind while I'm talking about these different subjects. So number one is from our observations, um, TikTok ads are insanely consistent. Um, now with Facebook, you see a lot of up and down, you see a lot of one ad set would do good on one campaign, but you know, if you duplicate it into a new campaign, it won't do good. You know, there's just a lot of inconsistencies, but we are aware of it and we do things to kind of like counteract that. Um, so we're still able to scale consistently and push, you know, bigger numbers. And even throughout the ups and downs, we're able to keep consistent. But with TikTok ads, what I'm seeing is a lot more consistency throughout, you know, in terms of ad sets, not really, or campaigns, not really being up and down, but being super consistent day in and day out. And I'm also noticing that there's no discrepancy between campaigns, right? Like if an ad group works in one campaign, we're also seeing that ad group working in other campaigns as well. So obviously this is going to depend on budgets and a lot of different factors, but ideally if it's the same thing, usually it's been performing pretty much the same, um, which makes it pretty easy to scale um, and easy to differ winners from losers. You know, what's a good campaign or ad set? That's like one of the things about TikTok ads that we've observed that's made it pretty easy to like scale and, and figure out what to do next or the next best move as we talk about here. Another thing is if your budgets are below $100 per day, usually it'll spend your entire budget between 12 a.m. and 9 a.m. It differs per store. I've had different products that will literally spend 100% of every single dollar in the budget of the ad account in the first like three, four hours of the day um, and it'll be super profitable. I've also had accounts that you know by the time I wake up at like 10 11 a.m. they're just finishing up their their last few dollars in spend but for the most part if you're doing smaller budget campaigns or ad groups most of your ads are gonna spend by the time you wake up or between 12 a.m. and 9 a.m. so that's just something that you want to keep in mind when you're analyzing your ads and obviously this makes testing creatives products offers um, campaigns ad sets it makes testing like very easy because you can literally make it the night before and then by the time you wake up you have have your results and you can spend all day figuring out what the next best move is. Another thing that I want you to keep in mind is almost every single week we get like some sort of new development, new feature, new opportunity, new type of ad set, you know, new type of campaign, whatever it is. So in my eyes, TikTok ads are just starting out right now. Like we're kind of getting in on the ground floor and this is just the beginning. Like the real TikTok ads, I could say, hasn't even started yet. Like the full potential of TikTok ads. And I think the perfect example of that is the interest targeting options that they currently have. They're super broad and they don't really have as good interest targeting that Facebook provides. Uh, but I think sometime here in the near future, they will be implementing better interest, more targeted options, which will just allow us to like target better for like the different products that we're trying to sell. So like, for example, right now, most of our products that are working are like generic, you know, things that anybody can buy. They're kind of solving problems that everybody has, whereas like more niche products aren't doing as good. And I think part of the reason for that is because of the lack of targeting options on TikTok. But as I said, like every single week, it's like something new, like clockwork. So I'm super excited. I think they are gonna introduce more targeted interest options here shortly, hopefully sometime like in the next two to three months. That's just like one example of something that they could do that would drastically change the performance of TikTok ads in general is introducing more targeting options. So let's talk about signal of a losing product and a winning product. So what I look for when I test a product is I want that thing to pop off and make money on day one. So if it's losing money on day one, it's not a good sign. Obviously it depends on how much money it's losing. Like if you spend hundred dollars on ads and you only lost $10, it might be worth going another day or, you know, testing a new creative. So like kind of as a blanket statement, I'd say like if you have a one and a half row as by day three, um, then it's probably worth testing new creatives, new interests, um, different, you know, Know, things whatever you want to test it's probably worth like going down the rabbit hole just a tiny bit just to see if you can get that product to pop off properly 
And of course, this includes like if you have a really good first day and then two bad days and it averages a 1.5 ROAS, that's what I'm talking about. Um, if it's con consistently getting a 1.5 ROAS every single day as well. So it doesn't matter. I would say average it out over the first three days. And if it's performing half decently, then, you know, maybe test some new creatives or test a new campaign, you know, do something to try to see if it'll actually pop off. But be very careful with that rabbit hole because once you get married to a product, you can spend a lot of money and waste a lot of time on that product. So sometimes it's easier just to move on. Sometimes it's easier to spend more money and test different things. Um, you just got to use kind of like your gut feeling and what you're willing to do on that product. So another thing that I want to mention, if you're like a week or two into your current product and you have been profitable the whole time and you're making money and things are going great and then one day all of a sudden your ads just stop performing as good, um, you st your, your cost per purchase goes up, your ROAS goes down, you know, all these things are happening. Um, if you were profitable at one point, and then it turns around and stops being as profitable or profitable in general, then I would say that the issue is likely your creative and you're probably gonna wanna get a new creative made and test new creatives. So signals of a winning product. So obviously being profitable from the get go is, is clearly a symbol that you have a winning product. Um, I'd say like by day three, you have a 15% or higher net margin. I'm seeing like on average for winning products, like three to four days in, we're seeing like 20 to 30% net margins on the total revenue of the store. So just something to keep in mind, give you something to compare your store to. If you're wondering, you know, the kind of numbers that we're seeing versus what you're seeing, that's what we're seeing. Another thing is once you move on from the initial test case, campaign and you start creating scale campaigns, which we'll talk about in a minute here on how to do that. Um, those scale campaigns actually being profitable is a great sign, probably the best sign that you can have um, in terms of your product being a winning product because now you not only have an initial test campaign that's profitable, but you also have another scale campaign that's profitable, which is a really good sign. So that essentially means that not only can you have like a $20 per day ad set profitable, but you can also have a hundred per day ad set profitable, you know? So it just shows a lot of potential. And that's one of the things that I really look for like when I'm a week or two in is how good are the skill campaigns doing? Cause if you just base it on the original campaign, the campaign could have just gotten lucky. And if you're not able to scale it, then there's a good chance that that product won't go anywhere. And this same exact thing goes for new campaigns. Same exact thing goes for new creatives. Um, if you're testing new creatives like every week or two and the new creatives are actually working and being profitable, that's another great sign that you have yourself a pretty good winning product that you're going to be able to make some good money on. So this raises the question, you know, transitioning from the original test campaign into a scale campaign, how do you progress a scale? How do you, you know, make that initial jump from 20 per day to 100 per day? We found the best time to scale is usually when an ad set surpasses five sales profitably. You will have some ad sets that are like on edge of being profitable. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the absolute banger ad sets, the ones that have a three to five ROAS um, pretty consistently over five or more sales. Um, it is okay to scale when you only have five sales on an ad set, but be aware that in my experience, at least the longer you wait to scale, usually the higher chance that the scale campaign has to work. The best way to say this is if you're trying to scale really fast and aggressively and just get results really fast, then once an ad set hits five sales, I would say that you're pretty clear to go ahead and duplicate it into a new campaign and start scaling that ad set. Um, but if you want to be more safe and you want to scale a little bit slower and have the highest possible chance of success, it's better to wait until you have, you know, at least 10 to 15 sales before going ahead and duplicating that ad set and trying to progress it further. Now, what is the best way to scale an actual ad group and progress it? So. Once you do get to that point where you have a profitable ad set with five or more sales, I think the best way to scale it and give it that initial test, see if it can handle more spend, et cetera, is to duplicate it into a new campaign at $100 per day. Now, this is the method that I used in my challenge video, and you can literally watch me do it and how good it performed. And it performed really, really well. And I've tried a few different scaling tactics so far. Um, and this one by far has been the most consistent. Like almost every time I duplicate an ad set into a new campaign at $100 per day, it ends up working like fairly well. So I would say that if you do have profitable ad sets, go ahead and give it a shot. You know, like I said, make sure it has at least five sales on lifetime and it's profitable and it's doing really good. Just dupe it into a new campaign, leave everything this game, schedule it for midnight and set the budget to $100 per day and see what happens. Chances are it's going to be profitable and you'll be pulling in an extra three to $500 per day on your store because of that new campaign. In terms of scale progression, because like, where do you go from there? Like once you duplicate it into a $100 per day, 
campaign, what do you do from that point on? So there's a couple things that you can do. Number one being you can take that 100 per day campaign and duplicate it again into a $200 per day campaign, very similarly to how I would scale using CBOs on Facebook ads. Uh, but for us, this has not been the most consistent, meaning that not every single time we duplicate 100 per day into a 200 per day will it actually work and end up being profitable. Honestly, most of the time it doesn't really work, uh, but so far we're seeing the 100 per days are actually performing the best. So instead of duplicating it into a 200 per day, you can also create new test campaigns where you're doing new creatives, new interests, different variables inside of the ad groups, whatever it is, I don't, I don't care what it is, age, budget, bid, you know, there's a lot of different stuff that you can switch up. Um, and essentially build off of that. So you create a new test campaign with five ad sets or 10 ad sets or whatever you wanna do. And then once you get those profitable ad sets from the new test campaign, then you can take those and duplicate them into a 100 per day campaign as well. So it's, a, it's kind of like a mix of scaling horizontally and scaling vertically. Um, and I think that this is the best way to progress an ad account and actually push high numbers is to kind of constantly be making new test campaigns and scaling off of those test campaigns. So I hope that that makes sense. I've been seeing some pretty good results with these methods and I want you guys to go and implement them and let me know how it performs down in the comments below. Low. All right, so now I want to get into breaking down your campaigns because I think this is pretty cool. I haven't messed around with these methods at all, really, to be honest, but I know that they're there and I do plan on testing them in the future, but I thought it would be valuable to kind of share them with you and, you know, make you aware that they're there because there are some pretty cool features here and you may be able to take advantage of them. So let's talk about the breakdown tab inside of TikTok. So with Facebook, the breakdown tab is notorious. It's how most people, you know, break down their data and, and analyze their ad sets, honestly me included. That's how I've been doing it from day one. So I was really excited when I found the breakdown tab on TikTok. So I have my challenge account pulled up. So this is the account that I used with the challenge that I filmed a while ago. So if we pull up one of these campaigns here, you're just going to want to hover over it and just click view data. So once you get there, um, it'll give you basically just like a bunch of information, which honestly, I don't find it to be that helpful. Most of the information that is, but if you come right here and you click audience, um, this is where you can really break everything down and have a look at everything from like a bird's eye view. So you just want to go ahead and adjust these columns so that all that I really want to see is how much was spent and how many sales were made. So I'm just going to adjust these columns so I can just see what I what I want to see. So breaking down by age, super easy to do. You have this little selector right here where you can choose age, gender, country, um, all these different things. And this is really interesting because you can kind of take an ad set that you know is performing really well and then duplicate it and narrow it down by the audiences that are performing the best. So for example, we have all the different age groups here broken down. Now, one thing I do want to say is like, I think at least with some of the breakdown tabs, I've seen them not being 100% accurate. So I wouldn't take these numbers 100% yet. Um, I think they will fix the problem, but you can see that for 18 to 24, um, we have a $27 cost per purchase, which if you know my margin from the challenge video, that is actually not profitable at all. So we're spending the majority of the money in an audience group that's not really that profitable. Whereas I can take this ad set, duplicate it, um, and only target ages 35 to 44. Um, and as you can see, I have a $9 cost per purchase here. So then I might be able to get more profitable sales. So this is kind of the ideology behind the breakdown tab is to kind of look at your data, see what's working, see what's not working, and try to break your ads down and get them more targeted into what's actually working. So another thing obviously is gender. So we have male and female, so we can kind of see the results here, um, which you can see that they're pretty similar. Um, so I'm probably not gonna go ahead and break down by gender at all. Um, you can also do age and gender, so you can kind of mix it up and see, you know, which, which uh, age and gender group is performing the best. So you can see that, you know, 13 to 17 females are actually performing pretty good. Um, 35 to 44 males are performing pretty good. So this breakdown tab is really, really interesting. And one really exciting thing that you can do on TikTok that you actually can't do on Facebook ads that I wish you could. I've literally thought of this before, like, damn, I wish you could do that. Um, but you can actually break down by interest, which is super interesting because there's only one interest or two interests that I'm targeting in this actual ad set. You can see tech and electronics and talents. But when you go to the breakdown tab, it's actually showing you a lot more than what you're targeting. And this is what I mean by it not being 100% accurate because every single CPA says $30. Um, but if you look at the average 
um, CPA for this whole campaign, it's only 17. So it doesn't really make sense why they're different. I'm sure that there's some reasonable explanation for it that I just haven't figured out yet. But I think this is really, really cool because you can see information overlap um, basically, if you're not targeting an interest, you can still see when people purchase from a specific interest. And I'm assuming it's because of audience overlap. Not 100% sure though. And I also don't think that this is fully developed. Like I think they're going to improve this a lot, probably around the time when they introduce new interests. But I think that this is really interesting and it'll be really exciting to see where this goes. And this could also be a really great way for you to get like ideas for like new interests on what to target because you can see that, you know, most of these are making sales. So the interest is already proven to make sales. So now you can just go make a new campaign and target the new interests that you find here. So that's it for this video. Lots of new and exciting things coming for TikTok. I think it's not 100% fully developed yet, but that's even more exciting considering we're getting really great results before they're even finished making it, which is cool. But I hope that this video was super valuable to you. If you have any feedback or anything that you'd like to add, please leave it in the comments. And if you are interested in working with our team, make sure to schedule a call in the description below. You can go through, click the button, it'll bring you to a schedule call page. Just wanted to point that out because I know a lot of people are DMing me, asking me how to get in touch with my team to get us to run their ads. So it's down there. Yeah, super exciting stuff coming up with TikTok. I'm excited to continue running the challenge store and hopefully we get some good results so I can continue updating you guys. Still waiting on the new creative. But that's it for this video. See you guys later. This is Noah Burr and I'm out. Peace.